Also today, as that climate change report came out, the government flagged new rules aimed at improving the country's waterways. Freshwater ecologist Dr Mike Joy, who's sceptical about recent reports indicating that water quality has improved, says he's happy with the direction the government is headed. Mike Joy says the climate change report is yet another wake-up call for politicians, but simply cutting cow numbers is about so much more than reducing emissions. For a start, I don't believe the better report story. Um, and I've, so the farmers are doing great things, um, and, and you know, there's no doubt about that. There are some farmers doing great things, but when you have you know, uh, a few percent gains from the good work that's being done, wiped out by expansion then the net gain is, is nothing there isn't a net gain so what and, and i'm critical of that lower report that claims some it, they claimed some improvement and then when the, the, they added the mci the macro invertebrate community index it wiped out those claims because the issue is that well there's a whole lot of issues but basically councils reporting on themselves which is the lower website which is all the council's data put together but one of the crucial elements is that, for example, nitrate. Reductions in nitrate uh, don't necessarily signal that things have got better. What it can signal is things have got worse and that there's a lot more algae being grown and the algae in the rivers is taking the nitrogen out of the water sample and you know, building it into its own growth. And so when you take a water sample, a snapshot water sample, which is what the councils do, you can see reducing nitrogen, but the reason you were, you know, is because a negative thing is happening, not a positive thing. So I'm quite critical of that, and I have been quite critical of that report of improvement. But, okay, but so to come back to the farmers, they are mm. doing good, you know, things individually, a, a, a heap of them, but against a background of expansion, then there's been no net gain from that. Okay, and you, you've been big on this thing of the MCI, the Macro Invertebrate Community yeah. Index, which basically, when it breaks yeah. down to it, is you know the prevalence of these, uh, I guess, the small spineless rubbery fish. Can you just yeah. tell us how important yeah. they are to the broader ecosystem? Well, so so they they are the indicators. We've got to think of them as minus canaries here, not as invertebrates in their own right. So what they're telling us when when they decline, and these measurements are based on organic enrichment, when when the species that are sensitive to organic enrichment start to disappear and the number starts to go down, which is the trend that's happening across a lot of these rivers, what that's telling us is that conditions are getting worse. And they are much better at integrating it because they have to live there. They can't go on holiday. They have to be in the river all the time. And so when things get worse, they're in trouble. Whereas these, you know, kind of abstract measures of chemicals that are called water quality, and this whole water quality is quite an, quite an abstract idea, a sort of a managerial measure of rivers rather than a realistic one, um, then, you know, so, that, so that the, the insects can't lie, basically. And so what they say is what I believe. Right. And, and then, of course, they give an indication about how fish more broadly are doing. You've been quite critical yeah. of DOC and, and, and why they won't protect native species of fish. Mm -hmm. well, what's yep. the latest on that and, and why do we have such an issue? Um, I, I guess we see other animals and we're very, very sensitive about their protection, um, but we, we seem to turn a blind eye when, it, when it's in our waterways. W yeah. What have you got to say to DOC about the, um, how pressing the need is to protect some of these fish species? Yeah, well, I mean, it's just this kind of thing that's happened with docks just being missing in action for the last 10 years. Um, the, the most crucial role they could have as, as advocates for, for those native fish, but because of, uh, mostly for political reasons, they've been keeping well clear of that advocacy role and, and there's been, you know, there's, there's endless information about how it's kind of been wound down in that role. But, but basically the legislation that should that protects other wildlife in New Zealand is, does not apply to native fish. And you have this amazing piece of legislation called the Freshwater Fisheries Act that protects a, a fish that went extinct before that, uh, 50 years before the law was passed. And then the rest of it doesn't have much in the way of protection, but it does have some protections around, uh, you, you know, it says quite clearly in the Act that you cannot impede the passage of native fish. And that's the part of the Act that, that DOC could have used to, to save, you know, a lot of these situations because as well as water quality, it's the barriers to their migration that's cut out and, and doctors hasn't used this law. And their proposals for changes are only proposals for what happens in the conservation estate. So you get protection of native fish within the conservation estate, the very place where they don't need protection, where they need protection is 
the rest of the country where they, they need to be to get to the conservation estate. OK, so let's turn now to the government because they have the power yep. uh, to tell DOT yep. what to do and to, and to put yep. um, things in place. What do you make of today's announcement? Um, what, was there much detail in it that satisfied you? Oh, look, it sounds fantastic, I think. You know, for once, you know, it's the first time in my kind of 20 years of fighting this battle that I have a Minister for the Environment, you know, basically saying what I've been saying for a long, long time. We know what the problem is. We know how to fix it. We just have to get on with doing it. And, and if, if it happens, you know, I'm, I've kind of got cynical, of course, with, with politicians over time, but, but if what he's saying comes through with the right sort of policy by 2020, then we can start to see changes happen that will improve our waterways. The timing is interesting, uh, isn't it, Mike, because uh, we've got the IPCC report that came out today. It, what it yeah. includes in there is actually it talks about the, sort of the, the methane emissions, and, and we know cows yeah. <laughs> are a big contributor to yeah. that. Uh, Greenpeace at the same time is calling for a cap on cows. In fact, I think they prefer mm -hmm. a cow cull. Um, what do you think the government should be doing there in terms of any new dairy farms and, and, and cows, particularly in the South Island? Oh, well, I think, Alex, it's quite clear that that's going to wind down by itself. I mean, it would be great. I, I think that's kind of the, ho the horse is bolted there or the cow's bolted. We, what we've got to be doing is reducing now, not just stopping expansion, but reducing. But there's a really, really... I mean, that, that, it's great timing, I think, having that IPCC report comes out, come out when it did because what it shows really clearly is the multiple gains we could get by reducing cow numbers. Not just greenhouse gas emissions, not just nitrous oxide and methane and carbon dioxide, but also water quality, swimmability, human health, antibiotic use. You know, I could I could spend the rest of the afternoon going through all of the other advantages that we would get by just that one process of reducing intensity. Freshwater ecologist Dr Mike Joy.